What's going on everybody? It's Joe Figueroa here with another video in our series, The LIR Dance Challenge. This content will be things that you can practice at home, either individually or with a partner. I will provide breakdowns for both leads and follows. This video series, like my weekly classes, will show you how mastering certain footwork will give you near limitless options on the dance floor. So here's your chance to subscribe and ring the bell, because we're starting right now. Okay, boys and girls, try to follow along. First, I lead Kim into a right hand turn on the spot, keeping her left hand low to wrap at her waistline behind her back. This is sometimes referred to as a setenta position. But today we're going to let the high hand go as soon as the turn is complete and our partner is facing us. That's the lead's left and the follow's right hand. After the turn is complete, the lead should back break or hard break, or at least provide the follow with the feeling of a hard break in order to imply a change in direction for the follow. For you follows, your lead releases your high hand, the right, after the spot turn is completed. The hard break creates for you a change in direction, like the copa break I spoke of before. With that follows, you begin your direction change on the prep, and as you step on your right, which is three if you're dancing on one, one if you're dancing on two, you should notice that there is nothing at your left blocking you, nothing preventing you from continuing to your left. So if you have a path, take it. But there's more here for the follows. Arm styling. I always say in class that the follows want to make themselves as narrow as possible. Stretch up rather than out. When you are not comfortable with arm styling that is, shall we say, grandiose or elaborate, then keeping your arms in is best. I like to suggest simply placing your hand to your chest. It still qualifies as narrow, and most importantly keeps the elbow out of the way. Here Kim chose to go with a type of hair comb. Notice follows that it's not a simulation of a hair comb. She genuinely is keeping her hair from billowing upward. She brings her hand to her head and smooths her hair back. This is not only stylish, but helpful. Her arm is up enough to not get caught in the low arm hold. Her elbow is in no danger of hitting me no matter what I have planned and it has her hand at the ready in case I ask for it. You can be demure and still be stylish. From here follows, you should notice that the lead has used the low handhold like a rope tied around your waistline and pulled you back in the direction that you first came from. Easy enough, you just accomplished the prep steps. Next, you step forward with your left, the direction step or power step, and you finish what would otherwise be a basic. Stepping forward on your left, five if you're dancing on one, two if you're dancing on two. That will have you moving backward on the line that you have been on the entire time. No need to dance around the partner. You don't get out of the lead's way. The lead gets out of yours. Switching to the leads for a moment. The right hand turn you begin with is Salsa 101. When releasing the right hand, I like to simulate a toss of it. I see it as giving her a window to style. She may go big or small. At least I know that I gave her all the power to choose with that toss at the arm's length. From here, the leads step forward on their third step toward the partner and wrap around the follow. The leads should break back, or create an elastic effect like I said earlier. This can be done in different ways. I'm going to show the two most common. First, just walking around in a half circle like you see here. In the last video I talked about how I like to use this option because it keeps the partner within my perimeter. But sometimes a back break can work, like here in this example. As long as I reach with my handhold to provide her with her left step forward, this works just fine. Granted, you might find yourself struggling to complete the turn around the follow, but nothing that you couldn't deal with. From here, we pull back a bit to inform the follow that we want to return them to their original position. This is a good spot to talk about the benefits of leads keeping a center point on the line. Notice where I started here, roughly in front of Prince's Sign of the Times. I walk around Kim during this movement, but I still get back to where I began. In order to do that, I need to release her handhold that I had. But what about the monkey mentality, Joe? Great question. Notice that I let the hand go, but do not disconnect with her body. I keep point of contact on her at all times. This not only helps me lead what's next, it also lets her know where I am. So the follow can then keep their eyes forward down the line. The constant contact gives the follow confidence. I trace my hand from the low position up her back diagonally, from low right to high left. So my hand ends up at her shoulder blade area on her left side. I extend my arm a bit to give her the space to take her steps back, providing the line so to speak, at the same time guaranteeing the line by placing myself at the center where I began. From here the leads can choose a back break or forward break, or even a touch step. I choose a forward break here. From there I lead her into an inside turn from the shoulder. Leads notice how I extend my left arm well out in front of me. I don't bring my hand to her body, I bring her body to my hand. Follows notice the arm styling here. 
As the inside turn is completing, I replace my shoulder hold with my pickup hold. That's where I put my hand to her back as her back becomes available to me. This is another example of monkey mentality. She is never without some point of contact from me, so she always knows where I am. I do the replacement hand hold, kind of like turning your steering wheel, hand over hand. The pickup is always done on the count of seven if you're dancing on one, on the count of one if you're dancing on two. I hope that's not confusing for you. Anyway. From here, both dancers have plenty of options. For this pattern, I chose a 360 crossbody lead. I will be doing a Science of Salsa video on the 360 soon. You know, if you ring the bell, you'll get a notification when it's out. <coughs> Shameless plug. <clears throat> Excuse me. After picking the partner up on seven, five of you are dancing on two, I step forward toward her in order to bridge the gap created by her traveling turn, and at the same time, keep her in my perimeter. This footwork here for the 360 is like a bachata half left turn. So if you dance bachata, incorporate your bachata half left footwork here in order to accomplish the beginnings of a 360. Look here at my right arm at her back and how I expand my arm on one, contract on two during the pivot and expand again on three in order to use the line to our advantage, moving Kim from one end of the line to the other. And that's the pattern. Like the challenges I did before, what I'm going to do with this one is use the same components and only change the handholds to create a new pattern. So upper body movement has some changes, but the footwork for each pattern will be close to identical. Let's go over the key points the same as the last video. First, for the leads, the importance of always providing preparation for the follow. Like in the other videos, provide preparation for the movement first, then provide direction. Direction is also considered where power or energy is given. Usually any push or pull feeling the follow is going to receive happens at five or at least should happen by five. Two, know when to provide a soft break or a hard break. Be clear about each. Both breaks are about the steps that you take, not how much force you use in your upper body. Number three, expansion and contraction are important. Sure, you can accomplish this without it, but it feels much better for both if it's there. For the follows, your key points to notice are that you always want to take your prep steps. Information is always going to be provided for you during your prep steps, which are 1, 2, 3, and 5, or 6, 7, 1, and 2, if you're dancing on 2. Number 2. Look for windows to style, and take them when they are presented to you. Start with simple things. A flick of the wrist, bringing your hand to your chest, a hair comb, all of these would work well. Alright guys, review both of these and feel free to comment below with any questions for leads or follows. That's going to do it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Do me a favor and hit the like button, subscribe and ring the bell to get notifications on upcoming content. I'll see you in the next one. And remember, keep dancing.